How important was the person's lineage in ancient Ireland? Well, Dag Dee, Vogus Falcher. Hi, Lone. Welcome, John O'Sullivan, Irish Pagan School. And that is what we're going to talk about there today. And the answer, not hard to say, it was actually pretty fucking important. Um, but it was only pretty important in certain castes within the society. Because we know from the records and the information that medieval society, well, actually from the mythological era and onwards into the mid to late medieval period in Ireland, Ireland was very much a tribal kind of nation. Uh, the entire island was dom dominated by a tribal society. But it wasn't a an, a tribal society based on anarchy and all the rest of it. There was actually very strict rules and very strict kind of defined structures within what was known as the Tua, which is the word for tribe. And then within the Tua, there were different types of Tua depending on their size, depending on their legal stat status and depending on their allegiances. Um, we know from records that, like, say, 700 Common Era, the, the Ireland was separated into no less than six provinces. So the four provinces that we have at the moment, you know, we, we know that there were more provinces before that. And those provinces were based on tribal power structures. Um, and it was large tribal power structures. With, and even within the power structures, though, it wasn't singular tribes. It was multiple different Tua who had either um, allegiances, family bonds and connections, or they were referred to as non-free Tua or Forhua, who had been conquered by other Tua and had their legal status kind of removed from them. So they still had a right to exist within their landscape and their territory, to people still born in that territory, but they had to pay um, either hostages or kind of taxation to a main Tua or to their over Tua and um, to the tribe that really had dominated them and they had no kind of right for representation themselves which is where we get into this concept of lineage and how important it is because in order for someone to become a king in ireland in these time frames you have to be able to trace your lineage back no more than four generations to a previous king and these were known um within this tribal structure as the Derfada, and the, the Derfada, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that word right, I'll be honest with you folks, it's a word I've read, um, but essentially they were the people who whose great-great-grandparent had already been a king or a ruler, and so they had to be able to show that they were direct bloodline, direct lineage of that individual, which would mean that they had the opportunity to step forward and to be considered to becoming a king in Ireland. Because most kind of monarchy structures around the world have a, a primogenitive circumstance in that the firstborn child or firstborn offspring is the one who takes the, the seat of power. That did not come into Ireland until the 1600s. So everything before that, Ireland under its own laws and its own kind of Brehan law structure pretty much had anyone who could claim that direct descendancy within four generations of a king had the right to step forward and put their name in the hat to be considered for a ruler, at which point it was then down to their associations, their power structure, their kind of lobbying, who is on their side, who kind of speaks for them, and um, but also their battle, their battle prowess, their own history of raiding and conquest around their neighboring kind of territories or against the enemies of the, the tribal kind of animosities that go around um but there was another kind of thing which i really really enjoyed this idea of fevis um which was excellence the individual had to have their own certain excellence about them be that an excellence in skill in thought in art in music in battle making there had to be something about this individual that people would look at and go they are excellent um and so lineage then becomes very important because lineage doesn't kind of equate you just to who you are within your family unit. It actually equated to who you were within your tribal unit and then not just within your tribal unit, but also the tribal units that your tribe is associated with from the bigger kind of provincial status. And all of which then connects back to the land of Ireland itself and the right for a person to exist without being harmed, molested or hurt within their own land, within their own tribal territory. Because a person who was found outside of the tribal territory could be harmed and hurt. And depending on their status within their tribe, depending on their rank, their skill, there, there would then be a blood price or a an honor price that would have to be paid for harm or damage done to that individual. And this is where the whole concept of costages come from, made very famous by Neil Nihalach, um, the one of the 
probably last mythical kings of Ireland, um, Nile of the Nine Hostages, from which the great tribes, the Northern and Southern Enil or O'Neill families, claimed their direct ascendancies. And Neil Nigolach was one who took many hostages from different kind of tribes. And the hostages were then transferred back to their own people if their ransoms were paid. And so, or they would be held and kept to maintain like a particular tribe's alliance or oath for them um, towards someone nominating or putting themselves forward as a king in Ireland. And so your lineage was actually pretty important because it connected you to your tribal landscape, to your family unit. Well, okay, to your family unit. Your family then connected you to your tribal unit. The tri tribal unit connected you to the landscape that you're entitled to exist in. And then that to, you know, whether your tribe or whether your Tua owed allegiance to some other tribe. And then whether or not you had a right to kind of speak or to be heard in the upper echelons of decision making and power structures within the island. But it wasn't always just down to that lineage as well. There was also a recognition of craft and skill within the tribes. And so people who were, you know, very particularly skilled or crafted at, you know, the core kind of things from like woodworking, carpentry, shipbuilding, blacksmithing, herb lore, but then also artistry were recognized as a value to the tribe in that structure. And so, yeah, lineage was pretty important in ancient Ireland because that's where you knew not just who you were, but also where you're from. And that then dictated how people would understand and connect and rationalize or come against you, come come beside you as an ally or come against you as an enemy, depending on your tribal territorial allegiances. So thank you very much for joining me for the conversation. It's an interesting one. It's one that's been going through my head quite recently. I thought I'd share a snippet of you of it with you because I taught a class on kingship in Ireland over at the Irish Pagan School. So if you're interested in knowing more about that, um, the mythical, but also the historical kind of kingship structure and tribal structures in Ireland, please maybe consider checking that out. Um, if not, if you can't pay for a class, then pick up a year's worth of free teaching. If you do one thing a week, you'd end up with more than a year's worth of teaching at irishpagan.school forward slash free. And that's all available for you there as well. And if you can't do those things, maybe consider liking, subscribing or sharing this video with someone who you think that might find it interesting. So until next time, look after yourself and take care. Slán.